good Cheerios can help to feed the good inside of you. Hey, smiles, got our legs and wheels, but end up everywhere. Which must really mean they travel right through the air. Happy hearts get full of ice when it's grown. Like a snowball made of goodness that never slows. In the morning, if you think your whole day's a flop, feed the good inside of you, cause it never stops. Mmm, Cheerios. And a welcome to you inside Carver Arena here in downtown Peoria. We have the second leg of a back-to-back -back series between the Bradley Braves and the Evansville Purple Aces. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast. Once again with Matt McLean, I am Brian Beto. And Matt, from Evansville's point of view, even with the loss yesterday, they have a chance to earn a successful weekend if they're able to get a split and walk out with a win today. Bradley, on the other hand, they're going for the sweep, and they did a lot of things well yesterday that they hope to carry into today. Yeah, it was really an example of two teams that executed the way that they want to play. Bradley got a lot of points in the paint. They won that battle 40 to 12. They out rebounded Evansville by a big margin as well. And Evansville, they came out, they wanted to shoot the three ball. Well, they did just that. They made 14 of them. It wasn't enough, but really an interesting parallel between the two squads and how they wanted to play. There's going to be more of the same today, Brian. And you look at the uh, quick box from yesterday and the Braves holding on to that nine-point win. Jawan Newton, a career-high 22 points yesterday. They want to see more of that from him, I'm sure. And, of course, Elijah Childs, uh, dominant. He scored in double figures in every game this year. And, uh, you know, both teams looking for some of the same, some differences here today. Absolutely. And Evansville went on a 10 2 run about the 17 minute mark of the second half yesterday. Really brought him back within. Elijah Charles kind of took over at the end of the game. You see right there, 19 points and eight rebounds. He was the catalyst for that win. Evansville has to feel pretty good about how they played yesterday. If they can come in and change one or two things, they got a chance to come out and get a win today and earn that series split here at Carver Arena. Well, Matt, we're about ready to get started. Quickly, the starting lineup's the same as yesterday for both sides. Levich, Newton, Givens, Kuhlman, Frederick for Evansville, Nolan, East Childs, Tavaninen, and Mass making his third straight start. Thank your pardon, his fourth straight start, I should say, as the opening tip is won by the Braves, who have won eight of nine against Evansville, dating back several years, obviously. And it's the all-time series lead, 34-23. to 23. Elijah Childs, who's gotten his team on the board now for the third consecutive game. He scored the first eight against Northern Iowa on Monday. He scored the first basket yesterday, and he gets the first bucket here this afternoon. Yeah, straight away, the game plan for Brad. They get Elijah Childs involved early, and for their sake, hopefully often. So the Childs gets it in the post, and Sean East with the big steal. And here they come in the fast break. From 15, Sean East with the touch. The sophomore point guard out of Louisville gives Bradley an early 4-0 lead. Couldn't start much better for the Braves. A score by Elijah Childs and then a steal and score by Sean East. Nice start, good energy for the Braves early on. Givens gives to Levich. Back to Newton, who we just said moments ago, is coming off a career high 22. He had 19 a couple of games ago, which was then his career high as well. So he's really picked it, picked it up from a scoring load. So there's the second steal of the ball game already for East, who gives the child to walk it up. Tava Nine, who had a pair of threes yesterday, gives back to Childs at the post. Got the mismatch. Yep. To a cutting Nolan, anticipated well by the Aces. Coolman for three is good. Yeah, it's really nice to see for Todd Licklider. He wants to see his guys come out and make some threes early on. And Coolman's a guy who can really fill it up from behind the arc. Able to get one down here early on. East with the first. Couldn't finish. Levitz the board. Yeah, Coolman made two threes yesterday on two of four shooting from deep. Again, we talked about it a lot yesterday, and we'll do so again today. The Aces are going to shoot a lot of threes in this game. Yeah, and particularly Coleman, good to see him get off to a good start in that Northern I in the series rather two weekends ago against ISU. He had eight threes in a series of uh, span of two games, so he's a guy who can really fill it up. 
And Levich, who came in eight of his last 13 from three, comes up empty on his first attempt. Mass bodies his way in, and the left-handed touch by the big man gets him on the board. A lot of what we've seen from Rink Mass has been behind the three-point arc in terms of filling it up from there, but nice to see him get a post-touch, know exactly what to do. Uses that body to create some separation. The left-hand hook shot is money. Came in averaging six points per game, but he's in double figures in conference play, and this is the fourth game for Bradley in the NBC slate. The redshirt freshman gives to Nolan. On the ball screen, Nolan kicks it out. Top and nine and quick trigger three is down. Great job there, Terry. Nolan kicking it out. The help defense. The defender comes in that was guarding Top and nine, and he's wide open in the corner. That's the guy. Evansville cannot leave Vile Top and nine wide open. That's a just a scouting mistake. Givens, who is quiet, at least in the scoring column yesterday, didn't get on the board until late the second half. He did contribute with five assists and five rebounds. But I'm sure the Aces want to get him going in the scoring columns. Step to the side for Terry Nolan. The defender went underneath the screen, and Nolan makes him pay. We've seen that a lot from both teams in both games of this weekend series. A lot of guys going underneath the screens, some switches. Well, they couldn't get a switch off there on that, and he's just able to knock down the three. The exact start Bradley was hoping for, and we get a whistle early, and you know, we're four minutes in. It's a good start for Bradley, but let's let's go to our keys to, to the game for both sides, Matt. Yeah, for Evansville, it starts inside. Interior design, Bradley absolutely dominated yesterday inside out scoring Evansville 40 to 12 in the paint they also won the rebound war by a huge margin the aces need to do better down low and then child's play take away elijah child make somebody else beat you we saw what child's was able to do yesterday on bradley's side it's a triple dare guard that three-point arc don't let Evansville get a lot of clean looks and then just just bring that identity do what you do keep to yourself build off of yesterday's win with that same game plan and don't try to change too much that's just the second missed field goal for Bradley, who had their highest field goal percentage game in a decade yesterday, shooting over 61% from the floor. Oh, what a and pass. And brought the energy early on. Henry! And one. And that was all manufactured by Vile Tavanine. I have never seen everybody on the Bradley bench get up like that. Right in front of the bench, Tavanine and steals it, dives on the floor, the pass ahead. What a start for Bradley, 14-3 to three on this first media timeout. We get another look at the hustle by Vila Tavanainen. Hi. Happy anniversary. For what? Every year you're with us, you get $50 toward your home deductible. It's a policy perk for being a farmer's customer. Really? Do I have to do anything? Nothing. 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 Nothing? Nothing. Hmm, that really is something. You get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. See you. May I have a balloon, too? Sure. Your parents have maintained a farmer's home policy for 12 consecutive months, right? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Welcome to the Cheese Show. And when Cheese picks on a performance like this, you might get to the crust and think, eh, hey, it's over. But no, no, no. Let's hear it for the Encore Cheese. This isn't just stuffed crust. This is Papa John's crust. Stuff. Brian Beto, Matt McClain. Well, on this NFL divisional playoff round weekend, we had a football score to start. All Bradley, Matt, 14 to 3 over Evansville. Yes, six of nine from the floor. Everyone has scored that has been in for the Braves, all six guys. But it's really been on both ends. Defensive energy has been excellent, too. It really has been. You say it's a football score. That was a football play we saw going <laughs> into break. Vile Town 9, and that was like falling on a fumble right there. Uh, just tremendous effort. You see the energy that Brad has come out and played with today. Uh, perfect start, honestly, from their point, uh, four and a half minutes into this game. And Deshaun Henry looking to clean up a. Uh, the old-fashioned three-point play with the trip to the free-throw line now. And we talked about this yesterday from Evansville's perspective. One of the things that they've done really well this year has not been too bothered by opposition. Right. Runner, at least in my opinion, that happened against Illinois State when they came back and got a win last weekend. Even yesterday, there was a couple of times when the Bradley got into a double-digit lead that you just felt the Braves were poised to pull away. 
But no panic from Evansville. They just continued to run with what their identity is. And they were able to eat themselves back in the contest. So let's see how they respond here. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, they, they want to make three-pointers. If you hit some three-pointers, you're going to get back into any game quick as Gibbons tries. And the bank is open on a Sunday. And the Braves continue to lead the nation. And <laughs> the bank threes given up. Not a real stat, we should say. That's not that's <laughs> not being tracked by anyone. Stat. But uh, that's got to be, I think, five as Henry gets in underneath and goes up and... Was trying to draw the contact. Didn't get the call. Here come the aces the other way. But either way, Benkin shot or not, that's the first field goal of the weekend for Gibbonson. That's huge for him. They need to get him going. Great help by Henry to get the block, and the Braves got numbers the other way. East for three, and he answers. Yeah, right in front of Aruna, too. That's a, that's a big wingspan coming out the challenge, but East just shoots right over it. Bullseye. And here's Givens. And again, like we said yesterday, he did affect the ball game, but they would love to get him back to near his season average no of 13 about and a half again. Yeah, great job there. It looked like Givens was going to have an easy layup on the back end, but Felix having nine and playing both ball and man, able to get a deflection on it as we get a look at Deshaun Henry blocking a shot and in transition, Sean East drilling that three last possession. Substitutions. You see Gage Bo coming in. He set a career high with nine off the bench yesterday for the Aces. All beyond the arc. Henry on the low block. Again, he's very dangerous there. He goes up. He couldn't finish, but he will shoot two. The Braves leader in free throw attempts this season. He's already made one today. Strong execution on that set. You can hear Brian Wardle. I said, no, no, no fans in here, so it's quiet. You can hear a lot of stuff. Brian Wardle, as soon as Deshaun Henry flashed across the, the lane there, he's open. So they get the ball to him, and nice shot fake by Henry to create this opportunity to go to the line. Henry will shoot his 45th and 46th free throws of the season. He accounts for over 20%. And it makes sense, right? He's a he's a big. He gets the ball down low underneath quite a bit. And he's, he doesn't shy from contact. No doubt about it. Doesn't shy away from contact. You say he's a big. I mean, he he plays on the perimeter a lot That's too. True. He's really done a good job of creating some some space in his game to be able to drive to the hoop and create that contact. He, he's one of those guys. He, he's not going to shy away from it. He's always looking for that and uh, earns a lot of trips to the free throw line because of it. And Aruna, who played well off the bench yesterday for Evansville, throws it right to Vile Tavaninen to East, who will reset. And the Braves at 5-1 and one at home this year. Evansville with one road win this year. Oh. Tavaninen rattles one home. What a start from behind the arc for Bradley. That's four for four now from behind the arc for the Braves. Vile Tavaninen, his second of the game. What a start. Here comes the high ball screen. Givens goes opposite, and it was deflected on the pass intended for Trey Hall. Antonio Thomas into the game for Shawnee. Still no Ari Boya for Bradley. Kevin McAdoo again out for an indefinite amount of time due to personal reasons, and still we, with the program. And Brian, we should mention as, as well, too, for Evansville, yeah. no, no Samari Curtis. He's been a guy big off the bench. Uh, head coach Todd Licklider confirmed last night after uh, in the postgame Zoom conference that he won't be playing. Neither will uh, Tomasi Gilgis Alexander. So two guys that Evansville could really use from their bench uh, not going to be available for today's game either. Yeah, that situation for Evansville, they – have four guys in the top six and minutes played in the Valley. So uh, really looking for that extra help. So really a blow to the aces. And right now just Gibbons and Coolman, both with threes. That's the only scoring for Evansville. And the turnover battle looking a little bit different. Yes, la yesterday the Braves turned the ball over much more than like in the first half. They yeah. certainly cleaned up Fourteen in the second. times in the first half, Brian. But it's it's flip flop here today. Evansville with six miscues. Bradley with just with one. Tough shot for Newton, and he is just a magnificent score. 
And he's really coming to his own. Jawan Newton, the junior out of El Paso, gets on the board today. Yeah, he's just one of those guys that can manufacture a shot. It seems like almost that well, as, as you see Darius Hannah getting involved. Hannah's only missed nine shots this whole year. Uh, he is 13 out of 22 from the field. All very, most of them very close. He had an emphatic dunk yesterday, and he gets his first two here this afternoon. You're seeing Bradley's step kind of play a big key here already. Hannah in the game. Antonio Thomas in the game. You know, Dania Kingsby guarding the ball here as well, too. So Bradley really getting into their bench early on. It's, it's giving them a big boost. Thomas the other way. Tavaninen. Sidestep excellent recovery by Newton to not allow Tavaninen to get that shot off. Thomas on the hesitation. Had it blocked away by Kuhlman. Yeah, nice job by Kuhlman to get over on the help side defense. His, his man. Wasn't near there. He popped out and was able to get a hand on that, create an opportunity here for Evansville off the block. Kuhlman flash into the basketball. Nice shot Triple fake. Drop. Yep, shot fake. Goes in left-handed. Floater, no. Tip back, no. And there's Hannah. Foul's going to be called on Newton, and the Braves will have it. Out of the timeout. 11-10 remaining here in the half. What a start for Bradley. They lead by 17. Hey yo, welcome to the new Chris Paul workout show. If you want to make it to the NBA, you got to have a killer crossover. GNC crossover. <laughs> oh, Jake from State Farm. Here's the deal. There's no replacing the real Chris Paul, just like there's no replacing State Farm. Man, what happened? Who are you? I'm the new Chris Paul. Man. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Dear Winter, I'm coming. My squad of 15 vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready to take you on. Safety's the name of my game, so you better bundle up. Toyota. Get 0.9% APR for 60 months on a new 2021 RAV4 or at least a new 2021 Highlander Hybrid for $319 a month. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The difference between a good building and a great building is craftsmanship. It's about taking pride in the finished product. It's about being a professional. Unlike other construction companies, you work with Morton Building's craftsmen from conception to completion. From the plant employees who roll the steel to the company driver who delivers the materials to the construction crews, every one of them are Morton employee owners who take pride in exceeding your expectations. Discover the Morton difference today at mortonbuildings.com. With Matt McClain, I am Brian Vito, and before planning your trip to St. Louis or to follow the 2021 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Championship, be sure to download the Arch Madness app or visit archmadness.com. Both resources have all the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Log on to archmadness.com or download the app on your phone today. Back here in Peoria, Bradley leading 25-8. to eight. So One of three intra-conference games today we have on the slate. Indiana State at Illinois State. The Sycamores going for the sweep. Same thing in the north side of Chicago. Loyola looking to take care of business at home against Northern Iowa. Missouri State in a non-conference action has got Missouri S&T. We'll keep you updated on those games throughout this one as well. Yeah, Loyola really strong in the final 10 minutes against Northern no Iowa last night uh, out of nowhere. It was just like they turned the switch on and ended up winning that game big time. But, yeah, Loyola is going to be tough this year once again. What's new? <laughs> yeah, I think I checked my phone, and Northern Iowa was up four with – Halfway, or I said five minutes into the second half, and then all of a sudden I looked again, and it was a 15 point final. Yeah, so. exactly. But just like in the Valley, North Iowa would come in and, and win today. I'm the Valley Scott, right? Would come in and win today. So it's a tough league. It's going to be tough with these back to backs, too, winning both games of those series. And it's going to be a really fun wrinkle to, to kind of dive into the, as the season gets going into the, into the rest of the way. Fredder King on the catch and shoot. So two of six from beyond the arc for Evansville. Bradley, a perfect four of four. Childs keeps it himself, 
out to Nolan from deep. Great job, Terry Nolan. Just kind of hollers at Childs that, hey, you got help coming. My man's coming down to you. He just hollers at him. Childs flips it out to him. Terry Nolan knocks down another three. That's his second of the ball game. Frederick King can't answer. Great rebound, Kent. Jason Kent, who checked in the freshman, takes it down the floor. They're looking to post up another freshman in Hannah, who backs his way in, goes middle. That is his strong hand, and he scores and makes it look easy. Yeah, Brad, they just make it look easy. 30 to 8 to open up this ball game, Brian. Just a tremendous start. Darius Hannah getting it done down low. Beautiful lefty hook. Levich, who's very dangerous from deep. Hannah had a hand in his face. Gibbons gets the ball screen, steps into a deuce. Yeah, and his looks going ice cold right now. The score is in the last three minutes. It looks like Bradley just got him in a funk so far early on. Their defense has been very solid. Bogue, who again hit three of those yesterday, too strong. Frederick King tries again. That's no good. Tipped out for another opportunity. Gibbons oh, stolen nice. by Thomas. One on one. Thomas on his way in. Up and in. Beautiful read there by D'Antonio Thomas. Just reading with that pass. Evansville not able to convert on two three balls. And Thomas takes ones away and go the other way. Nice job fighting through that step over and finishing at the other end. And Evansville wants to talk it over. Timeout taken by the Aces. We will keep it here, I believe. So as we've talked about in the first day and a half of this, uh, game and a half of this, it's a lot about Evansville's three-point shooting prowess. That and rightfully so. They sh shot a lot of them. They've, they've made quite a bit of them. They did a good job beyond the arc yesterday. The script has been flipped here in the oh, first no uh, 11 minutes and 8 seconds this afternoon. Well, it doesn't hurt when uh, you're shooting 5 for 6 from behind the arc. Bradley's making them. Uh, Evansville's game plan is they want to make you work on the offensive end, right? So they're going to do a lot of passes, a lot of stuff like that. They want to do the extra pass to make the defense work. But when you're not making those threes and you're able to get steals as you're Bradley, I mean, Evansville already has seven turnovers, as you pointed out, Brian. Just... It's, it's nearly impossible to, to come out here and try to get back into this game at this point because Evansville's not making the shots, and Bradley is severely locked in. Yeah, defensively for the Braves, we know about their, their scoring so far this game. They came in eighth in the country, excuse me, fourth in the, the country in field goal percentage defense, number one in the entire nation in two-point field goal percentage defense. And as of right now, Evansville shooting just 21% overall in just one of five from two-point range, as that one did not touch iron, so it'll be a shot clock violation on the Aces. Yeah, Bradley's played tremendous defense so far in this game, as we've said ad nauseum. That was their best possession. I mean, just, I mean, Newton looks up at the clock. There's, there's two seconds on the shot clock, and he's got a chuck from 28 feet away. It's not even close. Tremendous locked in Bradley on the defensive end. Nolan right wing three. That's his third triple of the half. His heat check goes down, and Bradley is in fuego. The red jersey's at home for the first time, as Dave Snell tells us, the first time since 1975 Bradley has worn the red jerseys at home, and they have literally come out on fire with those red jerseys. Gibbons, Anaruna on the ball screen. Back to Anaruna. He's going to try from deep, and he knocks it down. For Anaruna, that's just his second three of the season on his fifth attempt. Yeah, and a much-needed bucket. They hadn't scored in the last four and a half minutes. So Anaruna getting them back on track. A long way to go, but it's a good start. Nolan finally misfires after making his first three triples of the day. Newton curls on the ball screen, looking back for Enaruna. Recovery by Nolan. Enaruna recognizes the mismatch, and Nolan's going to be whistled for the foul. Again, the Braves have been switching all weekend in recognition of Evansville's desire to shoot the three ball. Tab out of the four, and guess what? We'll take it with him. Bradley 35, Evansville 11. You're... Hi. Happy anniversary. For what? Every year you're with us, you get $50 toward your home deductible. It's a policy perk for being a farmer's customer. Really? Do I have to do anything? Nothing. 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 Hmm, that really is something. You get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. See ya.
May I have a balloon too? Sure. Your parents have maintained a farmer's home policy for 12 consecutive months, right? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. You came to slay this peloton. Get a little savage with it. Brian Beto and Matt McLean back with you in Peoria on a snowy Saturday afternoon in January. Snowing outside, but you know what I'm saying? It's raining inside right Rain, now, Matt. It is. It's, uh, Bradley just uh, absolutely on fire from deep, led by Terry Nolan. Yeah, the fire's helping melt the snow that turns it into rain inside of Carver <laughs> Arena. Terry Nolan with a nice start to the game. He's uh, made three three balls already, and Bradley just racing out to a 35-11 lead with, man, just, just playing almost possessed right now. That's how well they're playing. Yeah, Evansville going to the bench, trying to, to get something something going here. Alex Matthews seeing his first action of the weekend in. Maybe going a little bigger for, for the Aces, trying to switch things up. The Braves switching up defensively, too, and there's Matthews fouled on a three. Yeah, Brian, I was coming into this series. I was looking forward to seeing Matthews because he was the 2020 Gatorade Kentucky Boys Basketball Player of the Year. He comes in as a freshman, obviously, uh, to win that award in a state like Kentucky. you got to be a baller, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, really curious to see what kind of spark he can bring off the bench, and he provides it right away. He's going to get a chance at uh, three free throws right here. These are actually his first free throws of the season. Actually, this has been an area where Evansville and Valley games had really thrived at the line. They did struggle a little bit yesterday from the strike from a couple of guys that are near automatic. But Matthews uh, able to make, knock down his first two. I had a lot of curses of the commentator yesterday, as we <laughs> astutely pointed out. Hey, they have been. They have been. It's all good. So Matthews comes in and it immediately pays dividends for the Aces. Gets three points on his first possession. Tom and Inans left all alone. Wow. wow, just a toy ball sleeper on the defensive end. Vile wide open on the wing. He said, thank you very much. I'll take that. Matches Nolan with his third three of the half. Gibbons with the floater. And Aruna... Gives the Aces another chance. Nice move. He's provided some good minutes off the bench for the Aces this weekend. He has. Agree? I was impressed with him yesterday with his length. He's able to block a shot. He's able to get out and kind of just be a pest, it seemed like, yesterday. And today he's knocked down a three. Good job down there in the post right now and going to get an opportunity to add on to his tally. Both these teams, in a small sample going into today, this season, have performed well on these back half of these back-to-backs. Both are 2-1 and one when they played the day before. Yeah, Evans one, a low loss coming out of Illinois State. For sure. And one of the narratives that we've seen, I've seen multiple B-Riders across the Valley say, is that a lot of teams coming into that second game of the series, they're more motivated. They're more locked in. They, they want to win that second game. Well, right now it looks like uh, Bradley's just kind of taking it to Evansville, and the Aces aren't really able to get anything going. The Braves, on the other hand, they're 2-1 and one this year. As Henry up and under, so dangerous when he squares up his shoulders, gives the Braves their 39th and 40th points. But they're 9-2, and two, so in their last 11 in games that they play when they played the day before. So obviously that takes into account Arch Madness the last couple of years, the Thanksgiving tournaments, the, the MTE this year. The one loss this year came in that one-point loss to, to Xavier. So it just speaks to the quick adjustments that they've been able to make the last couple of years. Yeah, that's one thing that Brian world has been able to consistently do is just make those quick things change. Whoa, hard, foul, hard uh, little tumble to the ground there for Henry. Looks like he's all right. But yeah, but Brian world has been able to get those guys to not really change the game plan too much on those second games, but add one, two, three, maybe just small wrinkles to kind of freshen things up and provide a different look and 
as you mentioned, nine and two in those eleven games in that scenario, Brian, just a tremendous record. Again, having fully introduced as they'll take a look to make sure there was nothing malicious on this foul attempt. Foul attempt. Uh, having formally introduced the coaches again today. So Brian Wardle in his sixth year here in Peoria, you're gonna look at him walking through the huddle, talking to his his squad, and then of uh, Todd Licklider as well in his second year joined. Evansville about at the midway point of of last season as I said yesterday it's been a near calendar year since Licklider was named the head man you get another look yeah it looked like Frederick King and Henry kind of get tangled up but Henry kind of just was holding himself up trying to protect himself from the fall and crash the ground and the referees say nothing wrong with that foul just a common foul common, common foul. foul thank you so the Brazel inbound with a one-four set, Kingsby, the senior, gets the screen set by a fellow senior in Elijah Childs. Twelve to shoot. They skip it to Hannah. Hannah goes baseline, bounces it to Childs, regains, and he's fouled. Yeah, good job, Elijah Childs. is kind of sticking with that play. Three defenders on him down there. He's able to kind of just strength it away from them and Draws the contact, able to get it, get it up, and earns the trip to the charity stripe. So Childs will will shoot two. He had the first basket of the game on the opening possession. That's his first point since. He tends to do what is needed, and Ray's been able to sp spread the well scoring today, so hasn't had to assert himself offensively, at least the scoring column yet. He does have four points here, go along with a rebound and an assist. And Givens will bring it up. He's got three points. And Aruna leading the way for Evansville. He's got six. Back cut intended for Newton, who comes away with it somehow. Yeah, right idea there on the back cut. Just kind of got a hand on that. Looked like Bradley defensively to kind of get the deflection as we're going to get another turnover. That's the eighth on the aces. And Bradley has scored 12 mm. off those eight turnovers so far. Bold will come back in for Gibbons. Also, we'll see Trey Hall. Yeah, it's a tough spot for Todd Licklider right now with his team down 42-17, to 17, but you just got to take it possession by possession right now. It's kind of one of those things you look at it almost maybe in, in those four-minute spurts with the media timeouts. Go out and, and win one of those and just see what we can get rolling and just try to get your guys to show some fight here and try to claw back into this game. It's going to be an uphill battle, but a lot of time left still. Kingsby creates space and draws the foul. Yeah, wide open lane there for Kingsby, just able to get into the paint, draw the contact. He goes up and under, goes to the left hand. You just see him draw the contact right there, the little scoop shot. Shooting 100% at the line this year at one and one. Uh oh. I, <laughs> I was sweating. I have jinxed a lot, a lot of foul shooters on both sides this weekend. That's one of those where you need a camera on us because as soon as you said that, I, my head just feeds the sweat <laughs> coming down. And it stays at 100%. And Thomas will come in. One sophomore replaces another as East heads to the bench. Newton to bring it up just with two points after an electric performance yesterday, as we highlighted earlier, a career high 22. Gets a good look at a three, two strong. Thomas to Kent, bounces to Childs, who squares up Levitch on him, and they're going to whistle Childs for that off-arm shove, and it'll go back to Evansville. Yeah, smart move there by uh, Levitch, I believe, just kind of took it in the chest. He, that was one of those things, so Elijah Childs thought maybe he's getting grabbed in the wrist. As he turns into the body, Levitch just kind of takes it, and looks like Elijah extended the arm a little bit. Rev sees that going the other way. Yeah, smart defensive play. He's a grad student, right? Hey. <laughs> smart guy. 
Ken spent two years at Fort Wayne, then went to UNC Asheville, finishing up here at Evansville. They've loved what they've seen from him this year in Lovage. Newton spins in, but lost it. I, yeah, I don't think that touched any red jerseys, and it'll go back to the Braves. Yeah, Kingsby just able to get a hand on that. Looked like it came off of Newton on the way out of bounds. Daniel yeah, Kingsby, just, just one of those guys. He, he plays so hard on the defensive end. He brings a lot of value on that end of the court for the Braves. It pays off once again. Kingsby off the ball screen. Pulls up from the elbow. And a run of the board. Newton to, to bring it back up. He'll receive his own ball screen. So will Bo, who drives baseline. So a lot of this yesterday, oh. a lot of deep possessions for Evansville. I want to poke out of bounds. It'll stay with Evansville. When we come back, 331 remaining here in the half. Braves continue to dominate at home, up 27. At Peoria's Sweet Fire Bar and Grill, you can enjoy strawberry stuffed toast to go. But they're not just making breakfast. You can order breakfast and dinner to pick up at the Holiday Inn and Suites at Grand Prairie. Find the carryout menu at sweetfire.com. At Peoria's Sweet Fire Bar and Grill, you can enjoy strawberry stuffed toast to go. But they're not just making breakfast. You can order breakfast and dinner to pick up at the Holiday Inn and Suites at Grand Prairie. Find the carryout menu at sweetfire.com. Some Western philosopher once said, the point of life is helping each other get through it. These days, we're all looking forward to getting back to the way things were. But even the days we wish to forget have had moments we'll want to remember. Moments that defined us. And at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we know that in the end, how we get through it all will always depend on who we get through it all with. Since 1907, we've been one valley, breaking down recruitment barriers, hiring coaches to lead our programs, and developing the country's next set of leaders. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley Pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit nvc-sports.com slash one valley. Bradley 44, Evansville 17, 331 to go in the half. Brian Beto, Matt McLean, as we get a look at the all-time history between these two schools. You see Bradley 1, 8 of 9. They have an 11 win advantage. They've really been dominant here in Peoria against the Aces, and that's followed suit, at least in the first half of this game here today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Bradley's won six in a row against the Aces, and, and Brian Wardle, his time as head coach, with the Braves, he's 8-3 against Evansville, so really kind of just using that success and building off of yesterday's win, Brian, and really just just blitzing the Aces so far today. Yeah, they really are, and uh, still plenty of time left. The Braves got to be extremely encouraged with for the performance in the first 16 plus minutes here. Yeah, well on pace to be over 100 points if it were to continue. Child looking for Nolan finds him. With Thomas, there's Deshaun Henry. He'll bring it left side, looking to, on the up screen down for Henry instead gives to Nolan who gets the ball screen from Child. Bounce pass Henry in the corner for three. Levitt's the board. Nolan and Tava nine and lead all scores with nine. All those points coming on three point attempts. Henry, who just came up empty at three, has seven. And then Anarita still leading the way with six for the Aces. Again, another deep possession into the shot clock for Evansville. Newton, who was forced to fire a moment ago, splits Man, the defenders, tough. tough shot, and the Braves should have numbers the other way. Nolan bounces to Thomas. Wheels around with the left. Mm. 
Henry sticks with it and scores. Yeah, that leverage had a hold of his arm, too. But Henry says, I'll just do it. Grab it with one hand, come over here and flip it up and in. Easy put back book it for Deshaun Henry. He's up to nine points as well, Brian. Nine points on four shots. We see a lot of that from Deshaun Henry. The, the high percentage, and he creates most of those. That came in seventh in the valley in field goal percentage. And free throws coming up for aces. For the aces, there's Childs. That's his second. So he picked up two second half fouls yesterday, or two first half fouls, excuse me, yesterday as well. But they came much earlier in the half. So he's been able to stay on the floor for much of it. And one of the big differences is, well, as we know, Evansville wants to shoot the three, but hey, Bradley can fill it up as well. I mean, today they have seven made three-pointers. Yesterday, they only took 11, and they made three of them. So, I mean, just a huge discrepancy between those. Today, Bradley able to come and, and fill it up from behind the arc and really able to give them some boost and push this up to a big lead here in the first half. Rebounding discrepancy in favor of the Braves. Not as big as it was yesterday. That was the highest rebounding discrepancy the Braves have had in a Valley game in four years. But they still lead in the boards 18 to 11 today. Tavaninen backs his way in. Flips it over to Henry, who wow. goes up and fades. Is short, but he was hit on the hand, I believe, and he'll shoot two. I say wow, because it, just Sean Henry does something almost every single play that it's just remarkable. The body control there, to the, that pass was snuck through there by Vile Tavanine. That pass was well behind Henry. He just snatched it with one hand. Great athleticism. You get in there, look at it. Short on the first free throw. We use the adjective versatile a lot with Deshaun Henry, I'm going to kind of one-up that and call him Mr. Efficient <laughs> nice. as well. I'm not going to, I promise, I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of advanced metrics. Please but do. Please very do. <laughs> kind to Deshaun Henry and his efficiency with scoring the basketball. He's number two in the, the conference in offensive efficiency this year when it comes to a rating that's dialed out. And, and you can really see why, like we talked about moments ago, he finds a way to get points without a ton of shot attempts. High percentage, free throws will do that. Hall for three, and he knocks it in. So Trey Hall, with his fifth three of the year, and that one was man that. manufactured by Anna Runa. He got yeah. doubled in the post. Nice kick out to Hall, and Hall was able to knock down the triple. That was a big time needed three. Let's see if they can come down here. Two for one opportunity if they're quick. But, yeah. uh, and but they go right to East. That one hurts. And there's about a 10 second differential shot clock to game clock. And now the Braves will pull it out. Smart. And if you're Evansville, you get the three. If you can get a stop and get a bucket here, you at least have a little bit of momentum going to the half of the Braves. Trying to thwart any opportunity of that is Sean East on the step back deuce. Yeah, strong crossover for East. Just a little step back, knock down that jumper from 18 feet out. Nice first half for East as well. He's got seven points. Matthews swings it over to Bogue. He'll fire and come up a little bit short. And the first half ends, and it was a wonderful one for the team and the home Reds today. We'll step aside, take a time out. We'll talk to you about how Bradley built this 28-point halftime lead. When we come back, you're watching The Valley on ESPN. Hi. Happy anniversary. For what? Every year you're with us, you get $50 toward your home deductible. It's a policy perk for being a farmer's customer. Really? Do I have to do anything? Nothing. 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 Nothing? Nothing. Hmm, that really is something. You get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. See ya. May I have a balloon, too? Sure. Your parents have maintained a farmer's home policy for 12 consecutive months, right? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs>
Halftime at Carver Arena, Bradley leading Evansville 49 to 21. Brian Vito alongside Matt McLean. Again, I said it earlier, there's three conference games going on right now across the valley. And we'll get to those scores shortly. But let's take a look at the overall standings. And it's fluid, right, Matt? There's going to be a lot of changing because not everyone's played the same amount of games. See, Valpo's played just two. Bradley playing just their fourth today. In the meantime, Evansville playing their eighth. But the Braves with the win yesterday moved above the aces in that category. Drake's still, still undefeated, but uh, you're going to see a lot of movement throughout the course of, of the season. Without a doubt. And it's that point in the year right now where, say, some teams have played eight, some teams have played four. But you can see the cream of the crowd starting to rise near the top. I mean, Drake has yeah. had a tremendous season. They're one of only six teams in all Division One to be undefeated to this point. So having a really good season, Missouri State, Loyola, Bradley, all are going to be contenders for that that regular season crown. When we look at the upcoming schedules for both sides. Let's start with Evansville. And this is the week we have the, the midweek game due to the travel partners, which Evansville has Indiana State. Travel partners, meaning if you're unfamiliar, you actually that's the one opponent that you play a home and a road game against. This one will take place at Terre Haute on Wednesday before they'll come back to Evansville to host Valpo for a weekend series at the uh, at the end of the month. They'll have that time off that was sort of dedicated if we had some postponements. Uh, Bradley will take on what we'll see here in a second, Loyola, as part of that makeup weekend. But first things first, uh, the war on 74 will commence just east of Peoria in Bloomington Normal at Illinois State on uh, this Wednesday, who's the Braves travel partner. But, um, you know, kind of roll with the punches. The Braves got a ton of games upcoming. For sure. And one of the things I love so much about the Wednesday where you play your home and home is a lot of time your home and home travel partner is your rival. Right? So you get midweek rivalry games. We got Bradley ISU coming up this Wednesday in Normal. That'll be a fun one. And it'll be a lot of rivalry games across the conference. So there you have it. But first, we got another 20 minutes of action here. Let's show you how we got there coming up shortly with some first half statistics and highlights and more. You're watching The Valley on ESPN. I have the power to lower my blood sugar and A1C. Because I can still make my own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it like it's supposed to. Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. It's not insulin. And I only need to take it once a week. Plus, it lowers the risk of cardiovascular events. Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, belly pain, and decreased appetite which lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems i have it within me to lower my a1c ask your doctor about trulicity Nine twenty-one. the score in Peoria. Let's check out what's going on, uh, I don't know, about 30 minutes, 40 minutes east of here. Uh, the back half of the Indiana State-Illinois State Series, and right now the Sycamores, who won yesterday with a four-point lead at Illinois State. Really nope. competitive game yeah. yesterday, competitive again today. Yeah, absolutely, and we'll see uh, this opportunity. Illinois State was able to get a win at Evansville on Monday to get their first Valley win of the year as they try to build a little bit of momentum heading into the, the rivalry game, which we talked about moments ago. Northern Iowa, Loyola, they're just about to tip off, and we talked about this earlier. Northern Iowa was hanging around with the, the Ramblers. They had a lead early in the second half, and then Loyola just went bonkers in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, Loyola's going to do a lot of teams. How good defense that they play in. Their offense can really get going in a quick way with Cameron Crowick. He's been doing it forever, and Lucas Williams, and they got some studs. Let's check out what's going on here after this. Stats and highlights coming up in a dominant first half by the home team, Bradley, by 28. Deep-sea driving, I see. Something like that. 
Well, here's something else. With your farmer's policy perk, new car replacement, you can get a new one. That is something else. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I would like to announce the return of the notorious Conor McGregor. <laughs> I plan on stealing the show every time. Second half, just a couple of minutes away between Bradley and Evansville. Brian Vito with Matt McLean. But let's take a look back at that first 20 minutes of play. Matt, we'll start with the uh, the highlights. And there are a lot of them from the home team, really. Yeah, no doubt about it. Bradley just came out and blessed Evansville. You see Deshaun Henry cleaning up a loose ball there. He leads all scores with 10 points. And really the story of the first half was the discrepancy in the three-pointers, right? So Evansville wants to come in. They want to shoot threes. I mean, they made four of them in the first half. Bradley made seven. And so Bradley really just able to come out and kind of fight fire with fire and really take it to Evansville with the three-point shooting. You see Vile top of nine and knocking down one right there. He hit three in the first half. Terry Nolan hit three in the first half. So the Braves up to a tremendous start as you get a look at our first half stats. Yeah, statistically, I mean, you can see by just looking at this uh, that the margin, at least at this point, is not close. Bradley just really dominating in, in every category today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Look at the, turn so the turnover discrepancy as well. Bradley had 14 turnovers in the first half yesterday. They cleaned that up down to three. Meanwhile, Evansville, 10 turnovers in the first half. That leads to 13, 16 points off turnovers for the Braves. Uh, they're really getting it done on all, all areas of the game right now. If you're Evansville, again, this there's still plenty of of time that you know but you're down you're down 28 is this again i don't want to either get in todd lickletter's head to assume anything <laughs> but i think it's one of those situations where it's like all right kind of not forget about the first half but let's go out and win the first four minutes like you said and try to, to play really well this half and regardless of the outcome feel good about ourselves heading into our game on wednesday i think you just want to see a response from your players like it's i'm not saying this is what it was in the first half but it's one of those things you're like Go out there and show you care. Earn some playing time for yourself, right? Like, go out there and, and fight. And, heck, if we can get this thing within, you know, 15 points within the first 10 minutes, or 10 minutes to go, we get within 15 or 18 or something like that. Just keep chucking away and, you know, go out there and, and, and try to claw ourselves back into this game and, and prove that, you know, we can come back from these type of deficits. And that's the identity of this team, right? Like they, they have played together. Well, they played for each other. They played very, very hard as evident by, you know, winning four games. You talked about no it yesterday. Doubt. They, they went winless in conference play. They come into this year and they get off to a great start at, at four and one in conference play. They dropped the last couple down big at half year, but they've been resilient. And when things necessarily haven't gone their way they've responded well so let's see what they they do here and if you're bradley on the other hand it's a situation where you just want to see more of the same right Come no, with that about same it. energy on both ends of the floor yeah and put put this thing away right i mean it's a 28 point game we've seen we've seen leads like this you know just disappear evaporate at times right so just come out here and and finish the job you got out to a great start and just put the icing on the top of the cake now Nolan lobs it up for Childs and maybe just missed time the jump or the lob. One of the two. That play was open as Coolman, who actually got the aces on the board, passes up a three attempt there. Newton with the basketball guarded by Nolan. Here comes the ball screen from Enaruda, who getting the chance here instead of Givens to nice start trip. the second half. Stripped by Nolan. He's second in the league in steals. And he gets it. Their favorite return for him, stolen as well on the other end. Here come the aces. And Aruna, bump fake, and Nolan got a little too ambitious and is whistled for the foul. No doubt about it. That all came from Newton, just not giving up on his play on the other end. Looked like Nolan could have gotten past Newton, but Newton just kind of swipes it from his left hand and earns this opportunity for the aces to see what they come up with. Newton with just two first half points on one of seven shooting. It was very impressive yesterday. This is a guy that can, can turn it on quick and really fill it up. So they got to watch it. Bradley's got to watch out for Newton. The give and go to Enaruda, who continues to play well, and he has earned himself the second half start. 
East comes up short on the other end. Yeah, for Enaruna as well. Yeah, very, very impressive what we've seen from Enaruna the last two or one and a half games now, I guess you would say. Really earning some more playing time. Nice pass. Newton for three. Just can't get it going so far today. This is the response that you want to see if you're Todd Licklider. Evansville's coming out, showing some fire, getting a second chance opportunity. Newton doing what he did a lot yesterday, taking what the defense gives him, getting into the lane, causing some chaos. He gets fouled. So Kingsby's going to come in for Nolan. Oh, man. Two quick fouls on uh, Nolan here in the half. Frederick King working off the screen from Enaruna. Step back and connects from deep. Great start here by Evansville just coming out and just playing their ball. You know, just sticking to their identity. They get a three from Frederick King. That's going to go down in a high percentage for him. He's one of their best three-point shooters and down to 23 now. That's his first field goal. His child steps back and hits a deuce. Yeah, nice response there. Elijah Childs seems like every, the beginning of each half always, the beginning and end of each half, it's like Elijah Childs time. And he comes up, knocks down that mid-range jumper off the baseline. He's got six. We've said it a couple of times, but he scored in double figures in every contest thus far. Just one of three players in the Valley to do so. Step back three for Newton is down. There's his first triple. And the Aces get a little bit of momentum going after threes by Frederick King and Newton. So Bradley will call a timeout, and that'll send us to break as well in a 22-point affair here in Peoria. Yo, Dad, come play some ball. No, my dad. I'm not your dad. Of course I'm your dad, son. If I wasn't your dad, would I be able to do this? What I'm, are you doing? I'm doing this. Make a swish. Uh-oh. <coughs> Jake from State Farm. Here's the deal. There's no replacing the real Chris Paul. No, my car. Just like there's no replacing State Farm. Come on, man. Stop trying to be If you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Dear all-wheel drive, I'm your new co-pilot, Cameron. Let's show the road what we've got. Snowy streets, we're coming. Icy grip, we're holding tight. Wintry mix, meh. Safety's the name of our game. Steady, Camry all-wheel drive. Right now, you can get 0.9% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2021 Toyota Camry. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Why not make 2021 your best year ever? Start off by visiting Peoria Tire to have us winterize your vehicle with our snow and ice performance package. Peoria Tire will check on everything, including tire pressure, fluids, and wiper blades, along with offering the best performing Yokohama tires available. Trust your vehicle with Peoria Tire this winter. Buy a set of Yokohama tires and receive a free nitrogen fill. Visit us at Peoria Tire, 8321 Knoxville Avenue, or call 309-7473. The student-athletes at Bradley University live their sport and put everything into their game. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists, focused and ready to get them back in action. At OSF Healthcare, our sports medicine doctors have special training on restoring function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare, proud to be the official sports medicine provider for Bradley Athletics. Quick burst by Evansville, and that man's crew, Todd Licklider, here to begin the second half. Ryan Beetle, Matt McLean. Uh, what's that? You said an 8 2 run? 8 2 run for Evansville to open up this second half. Exactly what they needed. See how the Braves respond out of the timeout. They get Tom and Ida nearly a look. Instead, he decides to bounce it down low on the entry to Childs. He gets a good look, just a little bit short. Yeah, that's the high percentage coming out of the timeout. Bradley says, all right, let's get our star the look on the block. And Childs, he'll make that a high percentage of the time, but just that one bounces out. Floater in and out for Fredder King. Savinan and gives to Sean East. East with seven points, two rebounds, two assists, three steals. And he's fouled, trying to go from one end of the hoop to the other. And Nolan and Henry in for the Braves from Mast and Tavaninen. 
And you can uh, look at this. He's chopped him down on the baseline. I mean, Braves ball out of bounds right now. They hand it off to East. Kingsby off the down screen. He'll try a three, and that's good. We really like to see that from Daniel Kingsby. He's one of the guys that Bradley kind of runs. When he's in the game, they run the offense through him. You know, he'll bring the ball up. He'll get him set up, that type of thing. He's a distributor. I want to see him go out there and look for a shot. Some he looked for a shot in the first half. He looks for a shot right there. Knocks down the triple. Hopefully, good for his confidence moving forward. Yeah, he had a, he missed a couple of shots in the first half, but they were good looks at the basket, much like that one was. So it's good to see that one drop in as well. East working on Fredder King. Bounces to Childs. He's doubled back up top. Nolan has all day from deep. Now that one up from East Peoria. <laughs> Nearly got it to go. It'll give Bradley another chance at it, however. A loose ball foul on the rebound. Nolan gives to Kingsby. Nolan on the low block. Draws the double. Decides to fire it back out to Kingsby. Tend to shoot for the Braves. Hesitation dribble. Kingsby on the reverse. No go this time. Newton the other way. Last touch by the Braves. Out of bounds underneath for the Aces when we come back. 15.42 to go. Bradley 54, Evansville at 29. Deep sea driving, I see. Something like that. Well, here's something else. With your farmer's policy perk, new car replacement, you can get a new one. That is something else. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Welcome to Peloton Meditation. I'm taking a deep inhale. Oh, I don't care. I gotta celebrate the moment, gotta own it for it blows. Who is that road in front of you? Let's go. Blows away. More gas to the fire. Oh. Are y'all ready to have some fun? Left knee, left elbow. Reach for the sky. Reach for the sky. This is Peloton. Get the app free for two months. New app trials only. Start today. Here you get a look at our score here in Peoria. Again on this, call them series now this year. It's weird to, to say that basketball terminology, but this is game two. Not quite a doubleheader. Not quite. <laughs> Not the twin bill. We always wondered in baseball when they had those two game sets, like, was it fair to call them a series? Now I think you can because we're For calling sure. these two game series in basketball. You definitely can, yeah. Foul on Bradley that's on the floor. A third team foul on the Braves. Just two on Evansville. It's been a relatively clean game. Nolan and Childs both have two. A pair apiece as well for Newton and Frederick for the Aces. Bove is scoreless today, a day after setting his career high yesterday with nine bounces it into Enarona. He, he does have nine. Tough shot for Anaruna, but he gets it to go. Good touch by the big man, and he leads all scorers with 11 points. And excellent work. 4-4 four four from the field, 1-1 one one from 3. For Anaruna to go along with 5 rebounds. Well defended by Childs, too. Mm -hmm. He was able to get a little mini strip on it, but Anaruna just regathers it. And just the hook shot right over Childs on the defense. So great move by Anaruna. Henry is fouled. And he'll shoot two. This is the second time in this game Henry's been fouled on a jump shot. So he'll shoot two more. He leads all Bradley scores with 10. He's one of three Braves who comes into this one averaging double figures along with Childs and Nolan. And once again, very efficient from the free throw line. This will be his seventh attempt. He's five for six right now. So 
So he makes a pair and back to a 25 point lead for the Braves. Newton to bring it up, guarded by Nolan. Bobe gets his defender in the air. Good recovery by the Braves. Frederick King right handed floater off the glass and good. Plus the harm. Yeah, really tough move there by Frederick King. The shot fake three gets his defender to cut off balance. Frederick King goes right by him and then kind of glides and hang time in his hang time midair there and draws the contact, banks it in, rattle home. Scoreless in the first half, but a chance for a three and then the old fashioned three point play here, and he does. Convert on that. So six points for Frederick King all coming here in the second half. East right wing. Childs goes to East. Again, free throw line extended on the right. He's calling for the ball screen. He goes opposite of it. Spins in a cool man. Back out to Childs, who drives in. He draws the double. It doesn't matter. He scores with the left. Yeah, right as far. You can see Noah Frederick King was set up for the charge attempt there. And Childs just says, all right, I see you there. I'm just going to spin away from it. The left hand little hook shot fade away. And goes down really smart. High IQ play there by Elijah Childs. Childs now with eight and five. Following the floor on the Braves. Mast will check in for Childs and Thomas in for East. And here's Kuhlman, a 6'8 senior out of Liberty Township in Ohio. The bow. Intended for Fredder King, catch and shoot for three, and Fredder King with a burst here in the second half, now with nine points for Evansville. He and up now for Fredder King, gets it within 21, so the closest they've been in a while now, but Deshaun Henry did once again showing off that versatility, getting baseline, drawing the contact, almost gets the fall for the old-fashioned three-point play opportunity, but just kind of bounces off and once again going to the free throw line. Yeah, Henry, again, Mr. Efficient. Before these two free throws, 12 points on just five shot attempts. Now seven of eight from the line, three of five from the field. Came in in the top ten in field goal percentage already. The junior from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Now 89% from the line today. Newton quickly up the floor. Bounce pass. It went up the foot of Mast, and it'll go to the Braves the other way. Thomas splits a pair of defenders. Bisley dribbles out as the Braves did not have numbers. Nolan was... Given some space, Hannah gives the Braves another opportunity. Yeah, the big mismatch there has got Newton on Hannah, and Hannah is able to sky over Newton there to get that offensive rebound and second chance opportunity here for the Braves now. Bradley trails only Drake in offensive rebounding percentage in the Valley, and the off-arm push by Hannah. Good defensive play by the Aces, and it'll go back over to Evansville. I mentioned that size mismatch just a few seconds prior. Hannah was able to get the offensive rebound, and they go back in. You see the size difference right here, and Hannah just gets that left hand extended. That's a, a clear giveaway there for the referees. It's going the other way. So Bo will bring it up. The timeline guarded by Thomas. Aces came into today trying to get back to 500. Bradley already looking for their, their ninth win. Step back deuce for Bobe. Too strong. Good work by Antonio Thomas. Really nice. He didn't assume anything on the rebound. He got a body, and because of that, he was able to draw the foul. And you know what he did? That was so impressive there. He was clearing out on Bobe. Eh? So Bobe. Did some nice job to get some separation on that jump shot. Antonio Thomas, from 18 feet away, boxed his man out and was still able to go and get that rebound. And uh, really just smart, high IQ play there by Antonio Thomas, who's been earning more and more playing time as these last couple games have winded down. Mm -hmm. 
Henry on the floor. Spins in. No, but he'll shoot two more. Great body control there by Henry getting into the lane. The spin move to keep the balance, keep his pivot foot. Just kind of rise up even through that, that challenge there by the Aces. And what do you know? Deshaun Henry, he's going to the free throw line again. <laughs> They see that spin move. You know, nice Groundhog move. Day is coming up. It's been on repeat again today. As Henry makes the first now nine of ten. It's funny, when he when he hit the floor, he almost looked like, what do I have to do to get one of those to drop for the three-point play? It's been every part but down the last two times. Hey, you did say Groundhog Day, right? Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. Margin was 28 and a half. It's 25 currently. Kuhlman guarded by Hannah. Backs his way down. Back up top. A dead ball here. Good job by Hannah. No, just two to shoot. Hall's got a launch. He does have a three in this game. Oh. And he banks in another. I think that hit the backboard, didn't it? Definitely, it definitely hit the backboard. That's like one of those impossible angles. I give give Hall credit. He was just able to get a shot with right. the ball with the, you know, laying the shot clock. So really good awareness by him, but whew, another one banked in is Evansville's trying to stay in this one. Givens had one earlier in the game. It's, it's like a quota to have at least one of those happen uh, against the Braves per contest. And two of them today. And Mass tries to answer on the other end and does. Pretty stroke from straight away. Rink Mass, I think, was lined up all the way to the bottom of the net. Rink Mass, another impressive performance from behind the arc right there. Yeah, and his fourth start has averaged 11 points per game during his first three starts. Again, at the Braves without Ari Boya. Aska stepping up and will knock down the three. That one comes up to the good defense by the Braves. Both sticks with it, but no one holds him off. The Braves are going to slow it up here, get into their offensive set point. In, in yesterday's game, Brad got the lead and just kind of run your offensive sets, milk some time off the clock, and see if you can execute here. Beautiful. Terry Nolan just takes his man right down the lane, exactly what you're looking for. He's going to go to the free throw line as well. Come out on the floor first. Two free throws forthcoming for Nolan. The Braves in control here. Some Western philosopher once said, the point of life is helping each other get through it. These days, we're all looking forward to getting back to the way things were. But even the days we wish to forget have had moments we we'll want to remember moments that defined us and at blue cross and blue shield of illinois we know that in the end how we get through it all will always depend on who we get through it all with at peoria sweet fire bar and grill you can enjoy strawberry stuffed toast to go but they're not just making breakfast you can order breakfast and dinner to pick up at the holiday inn and sweets at grand prairie find the carry out menu at sweetfire.com at Peoria Sweet Fire Bar and Grill, you can enjoy strawberry stuffed toast to go. But they're not just making breakfast. You can order breakfast and dinner to pick up at the Holiday Inn and Suites at Grand Prairie. Find the carryout menu at sweetfire.com. 18 Final Four Trips. Nine National Players of the Year. Legendary Coaches and Players. An iconic postseason tournament. The Valley runs deep. Dear Winter, it's been fun getting to know you. Sleep, blizzards, ice. I love that you don't hold back. We didn't take it personally when you tried to bury us under six feet of snow. It's cool. You do your thing, and we'll do ours. Stay chill, Toyota Trucks. Right now, you can get $500 customer cash on a new 2021 Toyota 4Runner. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
Brian Beto, Matt McLean with you as, again, we show you the season ticket holders here at Bradley, the, the cardboard cutouts and a lot of smiling faces and, and for obvious reasons, right? They're seeing their home team up 25 today. And Terry Nolan Jr. has a chance to further extend this advantage for the Braves, and he's been excellent from the line, 86%, seventh in the Valley in that category. And he joins Henry in double figures. That's his 10th point of the game. He had 12 yesterday. And it's really just been a well-balanced scoring attack today for the Braves. You know, Henry with 16, Nolan with the 11th impending. He's at 11 now. You know, Shawnee, 7. Elijah Child, 8. Really top 9 and 9. Just rolling, going down the, the list there. But you know, the Braves have been doing it in a lot of different ways, just sharing the ball and uh, doing a good job. 12 assists on their 21 made field goals. Newton, I know it's it's really not in Evansville's typical character to to try to, I don't want to say shoot quickly, but get up a shot fast pace. They they tend to wane down the shot clock looking for the best shot they can get, but uh, it, time obviously more than a factor at this point, so sure, no curious to see if they will speed it up at all. They do get a turnover here. Yeah, that's part of their game plan. They want to make the defense work for 30 seconds yeah. and still get a good right. shot, but you know, time is of the essence right now. You, you want to get some quick shots, there some quick points, and threes will do it, but Levich is not able to go. It bounces out. Contested three. It comes up empty for Levich, and now Thomas will pull it out. Antonio Thomas, who seen quite a bit of time off the bench the last four games now. Mass on the pick and pop for three. And he chases down his own rebound. Kuhlman deflects it out of bounds. It'll stay with Bradley. Nice job. Mast able to, you know, follow his own miss, chase that one down. And give, give Kuhlman some credit there, too, is the anticipation reading that pass from Mast and able to knock it out of bounds, get their defense set back up. Matt Aruna back in for Hall. Good minutes off the bench for Hall today as well. Kingsby. 10 to shoot. Mass, they overload the left side and they get an open Kingsby for three. Levitz the board. And that was almost a, that was a different look there from mm -hmm. Evansville defensively. Not sure if it was a matchup zone or, or what, but it looked like they just kind of overloaded one side of the floor. Bradley didn't able to get a shot. Looked like it was against his own defense. It's the first time we would have seen that all, all weekend. Tom and Iden. Not able to get it to go. Good look from Vile Tavanan, and you want him shooting those open threes and when he has them, but just not able to go on that time. Levich. Woolman walks it up to the top of the circle. Now shot clock again under 10. It's at six. On the slippers, Kuhlman with the finger roll. Good touch for the senior. Yeah, well done by the by the senior, as you say, to get that finger roll up and in, just kind of splitting the two defenders who were coming over to challenge. He just kind of rolled down the middle of the lane and said, thank you, I'll take that. Kingsby off the ball screen from Childs, guarded by Newton. And they, the five flash for Mass, catch and shoot for Rick. Yeah, definitely a matchup zone there is what Evansville's running with. You see Rink Mass. The ball goes on the opposite wing, and he just kind of floats to the middle right there, free throw line extended. Nobody picks him up. Evansville now talking on the, the handoff, up, so just wide open shot there and able to knock it down. Levich gets the screen from Kuhlman. They bounce it down low to Aruna. The leading scorer for the Aces today. Backs his way in Aruna. Strong, but he'll shoot too. Yeah, really strong move. He keeps his center of gravity low and just kind of he's beating down the hardwood there with that. Those dribbles gets closer and closer and closer and able to earn that opportunity and gets fouled. So timeout on the floor, and again we'll take it with him. 7:27 to go. Bradley 69. Deep sea driving, I see. Something like that. Well, here's something else. With your Farmer's Policy Perk new car replacement, you can get a new one. That is something else. Get a whole lot of something with Farmer's Policy Perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm one of the best in the world. One mistake, and it's over. This is a different fight. <laughs> I'm going to stop Connor by any means necessary.
With Matt McLean, I'm Brian Beto. You're going to look at the Bradley huddle trying to, to finish off the aces up big here at home, 727 to go. Elsewhere around the Valley, Indiana State had a five-point lead at halftime at Illinois State. They still lead by five halfway through the, the second half, trying to finish off their sweep as well. And Indiana State again will host Evansville this Wednesday, and then Bradley will be at Illinois State this Wednesday. But first things first here, the Braves trying to defend up the aces if you're just joining us this is really how it's been since the opening tip bradley brought a ton of energy on both ends of the floor they were forcing turnovers they were knocking down virtually every three and it was good as it could possibly be from the from the start for the Braves. yeah no doubt about it and you mentioned it's, it's kind of been this way since since you know the first four minutes really and bradley's just done a good job this second half you know the, the first half bradley they were just absolutely unconscious shot 57 percent from the field bradley's only shooting 33 33 percent from the field in this second half but done a really nice job staying aggressive they've been getting fouled a lot they're eight for eight from the free throw line so you know maybe not as many field goal attempts and field goal mix but they're still putting up some points thanks to their aggressiveness attacking the hoop back to zone for the aces Back and forth, wing to wing go the Braves. They go inside a child, short baseline, spins out. Yeah, and that's the weakness of that 1-3-1 one, one zone. There's only one guy at the bottom of it, and Child just kind of sneaks behind, goes to that block, just not able to get that one to go home. Bob gets caught, needs help, gets it to Fredder King. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. And a root on the pick and pop. Thinks about a three now, goes for the give and go. Yep. Good hands by East, but whistling a foul first, I think is going to go on Mass, who they're going to say held Anaruna and his route to the basket. And that's a smart foul by Rink Mass, too, because that's an easy layup. You'll see uh, just Anaruna was able to get right past him after the, the pass away, and he was expecting it right back. And smart foul by Rink, make a murder at the free throw line. Front end is good by Anaruna. He's got 13 on a perfect night from the floor. A perfect afternoon. I don't know if it's night yet. It's only 4.30. Oh, 4.30 night falls close, Brian. It's very, <laughs> it's very true. Very true. And Aruna does make both. And he's 5 of 8 from the line now. And a team high 14 points. Nobody else in double figures for the Aces. Bradley has Henry and Nolan. Yeah, 14 points and six rebounds. Just an impressive game off the bench. And there's Childs for the end one. Speaking of double figures, there's Elijah Childs once again. Hey, you guys are talking about double digits. I might as well get into that category, <laughs> too. my head in here in this conversation. So he's now got 10 and has done so in all 12, now 13 games for the uh, – for the Braves this year. We talk about leading by example and just being a man of utter consistency. That's Elijah Childs this season, just doing a great job every night. You know that you can expect he's going to put up some points for the squad and you know really give a nice foundation for the Braves. High ball screen for Bogue. Still looking to get on the board. Hesitation dribble. He flipped it up quickly, didn't get it. There's Enaruna to try to clean it up. Another chance for the Aces. Looking to post up Enaruna, a foul on the floor, and Enaruna will go back to the line. That's the ninth team foul on the Braves. Man, Enaruna, he's got a great motor on him, too. I mean, he's working both sides of the lane there. The ball gets reversed, and he just keeps his man. He's got Childs on him, and he's just able to pull him off. The entry pass, Childs has got to wrap up. Smart play by Enaruna. Making it look smooth at the line as well. He had a 28-point margin at halftime. Evansville's actually performed much better in the second half throughout the season. It's been, it was plus 20 in the second half against the compared to their opposition or their opponents coming into this contest, and they're plus three here in the second half today. East. Gets a step on Bob and can't get it to go. Good activity underneath the basket by the Braves. Gives them another chance, however. 
And the Braves, who were plus 28 in the paint yesterday, have an advantage again today. Not quite to that level, but it's 22 to 12 as the Braves continue to dominate their opponents in the on the interior. Yeah, and in the interior, I mean, and, and the rebound discrepancy as well. You know, Bradley's got the 33 to 22 lead in this game as well. So another healthy advantage for the Braves on the boards and just really been able to take care of business down low, no doubt, all game. Six to shoot, East isolated. Now here comes the help from Henry. Goes opposite and East with a quick burst lays it in. Yeah, second time to charm in that possession for East. The first time not able to get it to go, and he just kind of sticks with it. Nice job by Sean East to get to the hoop for the easy bucket. He's got nine points. You can pretty much book four assists per game for him. He's got four again today. And Aruna and one. Yeah, what a day for Anna Aruna. I mean, he has smashed his career high, which was previously nine. It came earlier this season against SEMO. But Anna Aruna, he's just everywhere, man. I mean, he is just, he's available. He's making himself be known on the floor. And if you're Todd Licklider, if there's one positive to take out of this game, it is the emergence of this junior forward from Amsterdam. He has just been tremendous today. And it's the, we were talking a little bit off uh, in commercial break, but a lot of it's probably too the, you know, the, the product of well, the Braves don't want to give up open threes to Evansville's best three point shooters. So, and Aruna really benefiting from maybe some of the, the focus on there. And he's certainly taken advantage of that as well. Tavaninen on the juke step. Gives it to Nolan, 12 to shoot. Nolan drives in with the right hand, no good, and a late whistle and a foul, yeah. and Nolan will shoot two. Yeah, there's a lot of contact on that one. The late whistle does come in as Nolan crashes to the ground. And just a really nice job this second half, really the whole game by Bradley, just able to, to drive down the seams here and draw this contact or earn trips to the free throw line. And Bradley has converted on a high percentage of them as well. This is 16 for 18 coming into these free throw attempts for Nolan. Yeah, that's yeah, really impressive. And that's one of the things the, the staff always talks about too is, you know, you one out rebound, obviously, take care of the basketball and, you know, make more free throws than your opponents even <laughs> take. And the Braves have, have done that here today. 18 of 20, 90 percent from the line, and what a big sample for Bradley and Terry Nolan. But nearly automatic from the foul line as of late. Matthews, who comes in, tried to flick it over to Anaruna, but he's fouled. That's getting the pass, but anyway, that's the tenth team foul on the Braves, so it doesn't matter. Two two free throws forthcoming. Yeah, looks like both teams will be shooting the double bonus the rest of the game on any foul, so. Evansville with an opportunity here to get two more, and Matthews building off a nice first half that he had. He was fouled in a three-point mm -hmm. attempt. Uh, his young career, his three points already a career high for him, but another guy who maybe he's earned a little bit more playing time here for the Aces in this contest. Splits a pair. He's got four points, all coming from the stripe. East will bring it up. Gives to Nolan. Back to East. Behind the back. They're reversing it around to Henry, opposite corner. Given space. Yeah. Tom and Iden. Knocks one down. Yeah, Levitch and Matthews were kind of confused there on the screen coming over. Henry sets the screen for Tom and Iden. Tom and Iden just took a quick little jab step to the left. Both defenders go under the screen. No help. And Tom and Iden knocks down another three ball. That's his fourth of the game. He now has 12. Matches his total from yesterday. Good closeout by Hannah. Matthews puts it on the hardwood, and Aruna tries a three. It's short, run down by East. Ahead to Henry. Full steam ahead, finds Hannah oh, underneath, who's fouled oh, oh, hard. Oh, oh. You saw what his purposes were trying. there. He was going for it. He had bad things on his mind. Nice pass by Henry and Hannah going for the highlight. Gets fouled. Don't have two free throws coming up right after this break with Bradley. In control of this one, 78 to 49 with four minutes to go. 
deep sea driving, I see. Something like that. Well, here's something else. With your farmer's policy perk, new car replacement, you can get a new one. That is something else. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Ball in. Put on a budget. The new $1 Your Way menu at Burger King will help you stack that bread, spend less bacon. So try a flame grilled bacon cheeseburger, chicken junior, fries, or a drink for just a dollar each. So save that bacon and get it on your burger instead. Because getting more for your buck at BK just hits different. The new $1 Your Way menu now at Burger King. Your way, way better. Six to go, and our Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, and through it all, our player of the game is Deshaun Henry, who's been right off the bench. Yeah, oh my goodness, 16 points, and Deshaun Henry has found a way to just fill it up. You see, he's only made three field goals today, but on both ends of the floor, you see that block. Tremendous job there. And Deshaun Henry just found a way to get it done all game 10 for 11 from the free throw line to boost him to 16 points. Might have heard the cheer from the bench, and that was the opening of the floodgates of, of Darius Santa, who it took a little bit longer <laughs> for him to make his first free throw of the season they would have liked. And the thing is, is like I said, he, he does knock them down in regularity and practice and such, so good to see those those go down and he's able to knock down both there. Yeah, the loudest roar of the day might be on the ball <laughs> free throw makes for, for Darius Santa and an 80-point game here for Bradley. So the Braves have scored 70 plus in three of four contests. They were just one shy yesterday when they tallied 69. Connor Linky seeing his first action of the game gets on the board. The freshman from St. Charles. And the loudest cheer of the game for Darius Hanna lasted about 17 seconds. And it goes to Connor Linky. Great job there by Linky staying active there on the offensive glass and gets the put back. Matthews comes up empty, Hanna the board. Kingsby, good catch by Thomas to keep it alive. Goes baseline, reverse Ooh. layup on the left for Antonio Thomas. Nicely done. Way to use the baseline to the fullest extent there. Thomas just tiptoes the baseline all the way around, uses the hoop to help protect that shot, and able to flip it up and in. And really nice drive there by Antonio Thomas. Ten different Braves have scored. Four points now for Thomas. Linky became the 10th just less than a minute ago. Double pump. Matthews, no, in a late whistle. I know Matthews will shoot more free throws. By the way, before that last timeout, Enaruna uh, was charged with the foul. So that was his fifth. He's, he's done for the afternoon. And a very impressive performance. 17 for Enaruna. Career high. 6 of 11 from the the foul line, five of six from the floor, and Matthews off the bench, who's got four points, drives in. Yeah, and Aruna just uh, definitely the bright spot of the game here for the Aces. In just 28 minutes, he gets those 17 points off of the bench and provided a really nice spark and really the lead man for them today. So something to build off of for sure and a positive you can take out of this game. You don't like to say, hey, you know, you, you lose the game, but what do you take out of it, right? So. There's one thing that they can look forward to going into their midweek clash with Indiana State and hope that maybe he can uh, provide some more uh, points off the bench. Now Thomas Hall just checked in, seeing his third action of the year. Really crucial part of the game here. These guys got two minutes to really play together, and you got four freshmen in. And ideally, if things work the way that you know you draw it up, right? I mean, these four guys can can play together for the next four years in terms of you got Jason Ken and Darius Hanna and Connor Linky and Thomas Hall and. That's your future, right? And there's not very many times in a, in a game that you have an opportunity to get out there and all play together and kind of work on some chemistry. And really crucial opportunity is Darius Hanna taking advantage of that play in time, the hoop and the harm. Yeah, he's now got eight points, does Hanna. Three of three from the floor, a perfect afternoon. Two of two from the line, five rebounds and a steal for the freshman out of Milwaukee. Right, 
Can't stay perfect forever, right? <laughs> that one comes up empty. Vogue to walk it up. Under 90 seconds left, Levich hits his first three. That's his first points of the game. He came in red hot from deep. Great personnel recognition by Bradley. He really didn't allow him to get any clean looks up until that one right there. But if you're Evansville, you know, is this situation, I mean, it's tough to win on the road, right? No doubt like about back it. Back-to-back, you play a team that is – as talented as Bradley, and now you you get to have a quick memory, and this group has had that this year, and they're still four and four in yep, conference, right four in the middle of the conference pack. wins than they did a year ago already, not even halfway through the slate, and they'll try to regroup and chance to get a win on on Wednesday in Terre Haute. Yeah, there's certainly the last thing that you can take out of this series if you're Evansville. I mean, that first game they played, they played almost perfect in terms of hey, uh, doing what they want to in their oh, game plan. You see Hall flashing down the the baseline getting that one to go but if you're evansville you know have a short short-term memory right you lose these two games uh, you were competitive in the first one this one the second game bradley just came out and blitzed you it's really just on to the next one now for evansville midweek and for the braves i mean yesterday they did a lot of things well they had their best field goal percentage game in a decade they dominated in the paint they dominated on the boards but even this one probably trumps that one from yesterday on both ends of the floor the energy the execution was just about at least, you know, watching it live right in this second seems like as good as it gets for Brad. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you know what? Two games at home, you win both of them. It's tough to do that. We've found, we've seen that so far earlier in these uh, a series. A lot of splits. Bradley able to get the series sweep. Two wins over the Aces. This one, an 86-55 dominant performance for Brian Wardle's crew. Yeah, they go on with a 31-point win. And, Everyone contributed really across the board for the Braves, led by Deshaun Henry, who we highlighted moments ago, 16 points as we get a look at some of the final uh, uh, statistics here. And just a clean game from the Braves, and they got to feel really good going in to play their rival on Wednesday night. So that'll wrap it up from Carver Arena. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast this afternoon. So for my partner, Matt McClain, everyone on our production crew over at Chef Tech, I'm Brian Beto. The final from Peoria, it's the Bradley Braves 86, the Evansville Purple Aces 55. This has been a presentation of the Valley on ESPN.